Okay, so today we are going to be doing another tier ranking video and it's all, it's going to be all about Harry Potter characters. But before we get into the video, a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites to online stores, to marketing, to analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one website that helps you to build your website and grow your business. But we'll talk more about them at the end of the video. When I did my last tier ranking video, this is probably the one that was requested the most. So let's talk about some opinions. I will say I really, really enjoyed the comment section of my last tier video because it was really fun to see how other people would rank things and how different people's rankings are. I also got the odd comment of this ranking video is very biased. So I'll just go ahead and address that right now. This is gonna be a biased video. I'm talking about how I would rank things. Let's do it. So I posted on Instagram and asked people to give me a, a Harry Potter character and I randomly selected some of them and then dumped them onto a tier ranking list. So let's do it. So this randomizes everything. So the first one up is going to be Creature. And I love Creature's character because he is loyal to a person and not a cause. And we get to see such an amazing arc for him from book five when he's introduced to book seven. <sighs> And actually we get to see a great arc in Harry and the people in how they treat Creature. But I love Creature's character arc overall. So before we rank him, let me talk to you about this tier list. I forgot to do that. At the bottom we have Avada Kedavra, people we just need to off. We have Get Out, you shouldn't be dead, but please leave the room. Love to hate, I had to create this tier for a Harry Potter character ranking because there are too many great villains and I would have no idea how to rank them by how much I love them as a reader or by how much I hate them as a person. Then we have good, great, we have protect them at all costs for the really, truly amazing characters. And then we have the Neville tier. And to answer another comment that I got a lot on the last tier list, I have no idea why red is the top and green is the bottom. I, d I don't color code these. So Creature, you, my friend, you may not be a good person because your morality is irrelevant. It's all about who you're loyal to, but I do love you so very much. I'm going to put you in the great tier. You are a great character. Gilderoy Lockhart, probably my favorite non-antagonist ever. He's terrible, he's a terrible person, but he is so fantastic. And he is the best part of book two, which is in my opinion, the worst book. Gilderoy Lockhart, you are great. You may suck, but you are great. Fred and George, we're, we're gonna protect them at all costs. We don't even need to discuss it before we rank them. That's where they belong. They're not just the comedic relief. There's a lot of depth to them. They're also fiercely loyal to their family and they are there in the final battle and they are thrilled. No matter how much they sacrifice, no matter how much they do for everybody around them, they will always still be cheerful in the midst of all of it. We're not gonna talk about the thing that happens in book seven, because in my mind, they are still the twins and they will forever be together. So Neville Longbottom is the next one on this list. And I mean, what can I say? I made a whole video about him and I called it a headcanon, what I would have loved to see happen in the series. But let's be real, it was an excuse to make a Neville Longbottom hype video. He belongs in the very top tier. Next, we have Ginny Weasley, which if you've only watched the movies, you may not understand why in the world she would matter at all, but in the books, she has such a great arc. She goes from this timid, shy fangirl for Harry and the youngest in the family. And over time, we see her character grow to this character with so much confidence who stands up to her brothers and to the people around her, someone who's incredibly strong and someone who was right alongside Neville in those last, well, in that last book when they, when the trio weren't at Hogwarts anymore. And we had a select few of the Dumbledore's army that were standing up and raising morale and fighting against the people that were running the school. Ginny is strong and brave. And I love seeing where she came from and getting to where we landed with her. I don't really care about her and Harry together, but I don't mind it. So, you know, she's amazing. And we are going to, ooh, is she great or do we protect her at all costs? 
oh, this is gonna be a controversial decision if I don't put her in protect her at all costs. How do I feel about Jenny Weasley? I'm putting her great. Sorry. I apologize in advance. Next, we have Peeves the Poltergeist. Thank you whoever sent me that one because I never would have thought of that on my own. Peeves, Peeves is a great character for the amount of pages he gets. When he's on the page, I enjoy him. When he's off the page, I'm glad he's gone. And if he had more page time, I'd probably hate him. And I'm so glad that he wasn't in the movies because that would have been terrible to adapt. It's kind of like how a lot of people who only watch the movies hate Dobby because he's, he's a difficult character to adapt and they mostly made him annoying for people that don't have context for him. Peeves would have been worse. Peeves, um, you know what? You're, you're just gonna be good. If, if I had a fine ca category, he'd be there. He exists and I'm fine with him, but I don't need more of him. And next we have Dobby, who, let's be real, there's a reason he annoys people that don't have full context for him. He is so sweet and he tries so hard, but he is also such a hindrance in a lot of situations, but he also saves Harry's life and other people's lives a lot. And he simply has a heart of gold and we love him. Oh, this one's gonna be controversial too. Do we protect him at all costs? Or is he just great? See, protect him at all costs. That's that's a high tier for me. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm gonna put him there, okay? Don't hate me. That I agree, that's where he belongs. Hagrid is in a similar vein to Dobby. He's sweet, he has a heart of gold, he is there for Harry, he loves Harry, he takes care of Harry. He takes in this kid who's been abused his entire life, neglected, given nothing of his own, and constantly starved. And Hagrid, what does he do? He takes him into his home, he listens to him, he talks to him, he feeds him. It's bad food and half the time he gets Harry in trouble or in dangerous situations because just like Dobby, he, he can't really help himself, but we love him and he deserves to be protected at all costs too. Okay, this is Veneer Greyback, or however you say his name. And he is the worst. If there's a worst Death Eater, it's Bellatrix. If there's a second worst, it's him. Even Draco is not happy when Draco is a Death Eater, letting the Death Eaters infiltrate Hogwarts, bringing them into the school. He's very unhappy that Greyback is there. He is, he hates him. We all hate him. He's a disturbing character. And I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and kill him. He's the one that bit Lupin. He has a special taste for biting children. He's a horrifying person. We're just gonna kill him. We don't love to hate him. He's dead. Professor McGonagall, one of the only responsible adults from book one to book seven. One of the only adults that would actually be useful to have in your life as a kid. Frankly, she's pretty much the cream of the crop. She's phenomenal. We will protect her at all costs. Now we have Bellatrix Lestrange, which as I've already mentioned, is the most horrifying Death Eater. She's way more scary than Baldi. And uh, I hate her, but I'm glad she's around because she's a really competent bad guy. She tortured Hermione, she killed Sirius Black, she tortured Neville Longbottom's parents into insanity. Nope, nope, we're just gonna kill her. I hate her, I hate her. Lavender Brown, another one that I definitely would not have thought of if you guys, if someone didn't send her in. And for my sweet Lavender, who dated Wan Wan for a while there, gifted him terrible, jewelry. We're, we're, we're gonna kick her out of the room. Cornelius Fudge, you're everything wrong with the world. Get out. So Wormtail is an antagonist that I don't care about in the slightest. I don't think he was poorly built up. I think that his character arc is fine. I, I think that his interaction with Harry and Voldy is fine. I just genuinely don't care about him. He's never been a character I've been invested in. He's never a character I've hated the way I should or had some compassion for or anything. I feel nothing about him. So we're just gonna kick him out of the room. Molly Weasley, she does her best by her family, always makes sure that they have a hot meal, takes care of the home, and brought Harry in as one of her own. She more than once says that Harry is good as one of her sons. When she has the Bogart thing happen to her in book five, where she there's a cycle of all of her children and her husband, all of her family, lying on the floor dead because it's her greatest fear, Harry is in that cycle because he is like a son to her. She brought him in when he didn't 
have a family and she and Arthur became Harry's family. And she may not be perfect, but she is great. Rita Skeeter, another one that I would not have thought of were it not for you guys. And do you know what? We're kicking her out of the room. We don't need to discuss it. Get out. She is also everything wrong with the world. Remus Lupin. If anyone deserves to be in the Neville tier alongside Neville, it would be him. Probably the only father figure of the several that he had throughout the series, probably the only father figure that was actually good at it and took care of him very well. Hagrid tried and he's sweet and lovable, but he also made a lot of mistakes. Sirius tried, but he was very damaged from his time in Azkaban and really treated Harry more as a friend than as a fatherly figure. Dumbledore tried, but he raised him as a pig for slaughter. Lupin, Lupin, I can make a whole video about Lupin. Lupin deserves all the good things in the world. Draco Malfoy. I did make a whole video about him. That'll be out on Saturday. I'm not going to say much about him because I have a whole video where I said much about him. I'm just going to put him in the good tier because that's the only tier that, it's the most neutral tier I have. And we're just gonna leave it there and uh, let that video kind of break down how I feel about him. I don't think he belongs in the good tier, but I don't want to spoil things. And uh, you know, these were randomly selected. <laughs> Luna Lovegood. Voice over Murphy here because I wasn't completely satisfied with my original hyping of Luna Lovegood. She is brave, strong, daggum smart, one of the few that stood up with Neville in the DA in book seven, challenging the people that were running Hogwarts. She's amazing, but because she's a little bit different, she is bullied and picked on. And if anybody deserves to be protected at all costs, it's Luna. Dolores Umbridge, we love to hate her. She is the most compelling antagonist in the Harry Potter series, in my opinion, because she's the most real one. We all know an Umbridge. And it is, it, it was a little bit too real. In fact, my husband didn't start reading the Harry Potter series until we were married. And when he got to book five, he almost quit the series because he hated Umbridge so much, he couldn't handle it. She's a fantastic antagonist. She's too real, but she, she, whew, she's a good one. And then we're gonna end this on Nymphadora Tonks, which if I created the order, I probably wouldn't have ended it here because Nymphadora Tonks is a character that I feel nothing about. In the books, she was fun. She could change her hair. She made her nose a snout sometimes. She was, she was sweet with the kids. She was a good time. I really didn't ever develop any sort of attachment to her whatsoever. I just, I'm gonna put her in the good tier and leave her there. Yeah, that'll be the end of that. And now that we are finished with our tier rankings, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. <sighs> you know how you lay in bed at night wishing you had a better website? No. Like, you wish you had a powerful blogging tool where you could share your photos, videos, and stories, and like customize your posts and schedule them however you want to do it. Or social sharing so that people could just click one button and share it to their Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, like everything. Listen, Squarespace has all that stuff. So stop waking me up and just get a Squarespace website. So head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the link in my description to save 10% off of your first purchase of website or domain, and be sure to check out Squarespace. So there you go, that is how I would rank the Harry Potter characters that were sent to me randomly. I intentionally didn't take any of the randomly selected options of the trio because I just wanted to talk about side characters. That's a lot more interesting. But I really enjoyed this and I'm excited to see how you guys would rank things. What did you agree with? What did you disagree with? Be sure to keep chatting with me about it in the comments. I post videos every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.